Hey guys, this is the Ride Defiant Pro Cruise helmet. It's the bold graphic. Right away, I'm just going to suggest that you go to Revzilla or another online uh, store that is going to go through the full breakdown. I'm not going to go through that and do a less sophisticated job in breaking the helmet down, but I've had a showy quest for, I guess, at least the past three to four years. I think it's three and a half years at this point. And it was my first helmet, and it was too big. And I tolerated it. I made the cheek pads bigger. It wasn't floating around my head or anything, but it just didn't fit right. Uh, it was nice and quiet, though. It would have been quieter if it fit me well. So I was looking for an excuse. Um, the big excuse here was the lack of a sunshield. I had to change that visor all the time. I'd bring visors with me, stuff in these visors in your bag, and your pants, and everywhere else you can imagine. Because you, know, you can't cross you know, light to dark. And the sunglasses issue, we've all been there. That's, that's no picnic either. So I was looking for a helmet that fit. I was looking for something safe. I was looking for something that had good airflow. You can see the big vents here. Looking for something that was meant more for upright. I got a BMW S1000 a single R that's a super naked. So that's more upright too, even though you can go into a semi-tuck. And then I get the Holly, the Holly Fatboy. So this, this helmet is suited for it. The Defiant series is suited for it. When I say Defiant Pro Cruise, it, it basically just means they have this system here where you get a sun shield on the outside, basically to keep it snell rating, because with the mechanism of this inside the helmet, it just doesn't pass. And to be honest, I agree, it's not the safest thing if you get into a crash, in my opinion. Uh, but it just lifts up. So you get night riding, you lift that sucker up like this. You get daytime riding, you drop it down like that. It fits well. And it works great. I've been I've been riding on it so far. I haven't tried it with the camera, so I'll talk more about the helmet in terms of uh, you know the noise, the subjective noise, and also the fit, and uh, maybe some other things. And and then you can also hear the background, the wind noise in this thing because the Showy Quest had very little wind noise, and a lot of that is a result of where you place the microphone inside the helmet. So obviously these are two different helmets. You can't put it in the same exact place. I can show you where I have the microphone for now. I shy against permanently affixing microphones and helmets with glue, but basically I got it right in the cheek pad here. Uh, it's an elastic pad that fits over this cheek pad and I have it tucked in right in here, more up. And I guess we'll see where, where it goes, but let's take a look at this thing because I can tell you, I think it's a big improvement. Once again, this is the bold graphic. Uh, it was, I think, about 450 to 60 bucks, which is better. It's ridiculously expensive, as all Shoei helmets are, and Arai helmets are, and others. But I think it's worth it, at least for me. Uh, the normal price is well over 600 bucks, if not closer to seven. So I got this from Dennis Kirk. They tend to have good deals every now and again if you, if you, if you have the right product at the right time. So let's go for a ride and see how this thing handles the wind, especially if you're holding a camera and you want to you see how well it isolates the noise. And if you're, if you're a motovlogger, because a lot of you guys out there are riding Harleys, cruisers, or super nakeds, and not everyone's tucked over like the super sport guys. So far, so good. I don't know if you guys can hear me or if the bike sounds muffled. That's the experiment here. One thing I've always liked about a Rye helmets is their profile, especially with the, the chin bar, the chin area projecting forward less than other helmets. It creates less room in that chin area, so if you're Jay Leno or anyone else with a big front face, big old beard, might be a little more jammed in there, but if you turn your head to the left and right, you don't get pulled as much because that profile it just it doesn't protrude as much. As, it doesn't have that sail effect. If you try to look behind you or look to the left, look to the right. So I've always liked that about Arai helmets. I can say the noise level, it seems to be on par with the Quest, but you know, I ride with the earplugs anyway, so I think any uh, isolation from your perspective might be more relevant here. One thing I worried about was this sun visor that I have covering my eyes. First of all, I was, I was curious as to whether or not it would be complete enough because as you can see from the first part of this video, it doesn't come down all the way. 
I have experienced it in every single sun position, but just by how it's hitting my my visual field here, I think the sun would have to be below the horizon for it to be a problem. I think, but if it's gonna ever cause a problem, it's gonna be very early morning or sunset. But the sun is really low, and uh, it's not that time of day right now. It's about 2.30 p.m. The sunset around 4.30 and well, like 5, probably 5, 5.30 this time of year. Airflow is excellent. Ton of airflow. You can see that big old vent in the front. Another nice feature of this helmet is it comes with a pin lock system pre-installed on the inside of the shield like so many helmets do. The last helmet I had also had the same that quest of the same thing, but it didn't come with the actual pin lock shield. And considering that I have to get I thought I'd have to get different types of pin locks for night and day, I just stayed away from it. This one came with the actual pin lock shield in the box. And around San Diego, especially in the winter months, it's warm during the day and at night it cools off quite a bit. So you get a lot of moisture in the air. In the evenings or in the morning time, a lot of fog. And you're constantly wiping your visor. So I, I made it already through a, a night like that and it was a revelation because I could actually see I'm constantly flipping my lid open or wiping my visor. We're gonna go on one of my favorite local rides. Nice uh, midday hour cruise through some lakes and through some woods, through some canyons. But it's a it's a mellow day. I'll put in some clips after this, just so you guys can get a chance to hear the sound of the wind noise and the bike, if that's what you're into. I swear when people see police, they just freeze up, their brain stops working. They just turn into slow thinking morons. I'm sure the cops are like you're all docile and stupid, but please, for the sake of the rest of us, keep a level head. What's wrong with you people? You're 30, what's wrong with you? can't defend 35 miles an hour on this road. There's no defense for that. You know, I had a bit of a problem on the last helmet. This camera is really light as you know it's a GoPro and it's gonna mount to a couple of connectors on there so it can wrap around the side a little bit and get it where I need to get it but it's not a lot of weight even so the last helmet because it was a little bit too big it was it tended to torque the helmet down and I felt that more in the back of my neck because you had to resist that weight forward and the helmet would be torquing down and I haven't ridden this thing for a long period of time but I can tell you It certainly doesn't feel that torque. And I think because the helmet fits, that's probably why. Another issue is that, you know, if you, if you think of this as a lever arm, this chin piece, the shorter it is, the less it may torque it. I don't know, I don't get too into it, but I think the bottom line is if you're wearing a camera on the front of your helmet, get a helmet that fits, but even without a camera, get a helmet that fits. 
and if you, if you first start riding, if you're on the border of a helmet and one seems to be a little more comfortable, so Mia is like 58, 59 centimeters for total circumference, and it put me in the borderline between a medium and a large. I went to large, of course, because I felt more comfortable like every new rider. Don't do that. Don't do it. Just get the smaller one. You have to stuff your head in there a little bit, but it's going to break in and it's going to be better. If you're on the borderline, always go smaller, unless you've got like, a really bad hot spot somewhere. Does anybody not have an SUV? The three cars I just passed, a lot of my cute dudes too. The two in front of me, this, I don't know if it's this part of the world. I know in Europe you guys might get a little more relief, but in the United States, it's like a cute you craze. Surprised people are embarrassed to own those things. I mean, trucks are one thing, they have a purpose if you use it. Range Rover, that's a cute you. It's completely off road capable, but you know, I think it's never been off road and never will be. So you're cute. You're cute and you're in a you. This is bad. You guys are gonna move it, man. Oh, look! I got another one in front of me with a bunch of rakes and sticks in the back of the bed. Could I get a more disabled crew of trucks in front of me? Maybe an 18 wheeler would complement this series well. I'm glad those Polaris three wheeler. I know there's a bunch of three wheels out there. They're all, they're all the same to me. Three wheelers. I'm glad some of those guys just wave. Because I don't know, I really don't know what to do with those people. I really don't. I mean, it feels odd. So I'm glad they just that guy just confidently put his hand out there. I mean, they really like the transsexuals of motorcycling. They're completely legitimate. And it's certainly equivalent. But they're, they're different enough. You're just not quite sure how to address them. A guy in a three-wheeler waving at you confidently is the same thing as a transgender person walking up to you and saying, I am transgender. I prefer you call me she. You say thank you. I appreciate that. We all feel a little more comfortable now.